Hi everyone, Lee Veras here, bringing you Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students. And uh, continuing on from last week, we were examining the channel mixer and uh, we were using it to create black and white conversions. This time we're going to look at using the channel mixer with color images. This tutorial shows a few different ways to use channel mixer adjustments in color images. We'll see how to use the channel mixer adjustment for luminosity enhancement and how to use the channel mixer to lighten green colors. Also how to enhance green saturation. Finally, we'll see how to set a white point and a black point for the final image with a curves adjustment layer. Let's get started. Okay, so we're going to look at this image, uh, and uh, I, I chose this mostly just to illustrate a few uh, concepts about the channel mixer. Um, but uh, overall, not not a bad image. It's done you know, kind of normal raw processing controls on it and brought it in, and everything's looking pretty decent, uh, at least visually. But uh, whenever I'm thinking about how to enhance an image, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is look at the grayscale channel. So I'm going to go ahead here, look at the red channel, uh, the green channel, the blue channel, and I'm kind of looking for which channel is my friend here. And it's certainly not the, the blue channel. I mean, this is kind of horrible. If I was thinking that I was going to make a black and white conversion, I certainly wouldn't use anything from the blue channel. Uh, or the green channel here. I think the red channel overall looks much better. It's brightened her up. And um, let's just see if I can apply the red channel luminosity back on top of the color image. So let's do that. Um, the easiest way to do that is using a channel mixer adjustment. So I will uh, pick the channel mixer adjustment and uh, all of these presets are uh, black and white conversions. So let's let's try the red filter preset, which is going to give me uh, basically it gives me 100% of the of the red channel. So although there's a little bug here, sometimes Photoshop fails to show you that you've made any adjustment in the red channel. I'm going to go ahead and put that on at 100. Um, okay. So the, when you say output channel is gray, it means that this red channel is going to be applied equally across all three of the color channels. And when that happens, you get a black and white. So we've used channel mixer to apply the red channel to uh, the, uh, the image. And we've got a black and white now, but I'm going to change this to luminosity. So I'm just labeling it. And we'll take the layer blend mode for this channel mixer layer and change it from normal to luminosity. And you notice how dramatically that affects the color image, right? So we went from this to this. Uh, so anything that has a red component in it has gotten a, a quite a bit brighter. Uh, and so perhaps maybe a little too bright, but it has lightened up her skin quite a bit. So let me let me reduce that. I think probably we don't need quite that much, but, uh, you know, something like that. So we, we were able to really affect the, the skin tone dramatically more than uh, the clothing or the the green trees in the background. It's, it's brightened up things around here a little bit, but it's not hurting anything at this point. Uh, you know, perhaps we could mask off some of that extra brightness from the uh, chickens here. So I'll just get a paintbrush and uh, paint into the layer mask. Um, and just, you know, paint with black. Make sure I have black in there. And I'm just going to mask it off of these chickens just because I don't want that to get too bright. Okay, so that's just one way of working with a single channel mixer, we can use the layer mask to uh, alter um, how it's being applied. So in this case, since we're using it just for luminosity, it's a really nice little trick for getting that skin tone a little bit lighter. Okay, so now, um, now 
I'm thinking, you know, I'd like it if these if these trees just seemed a little brighter and had a little more life to them. Uh, so there's an interesting trick you can use the uh, channel mixer for here. So we're going to make another channel mixer. And this time uh, I'm going to put my output channel to green. I'm not going to have it in monochrome, so I'm not picking one of the black and white conversion uh, presets. Uh, we're just going to add brightness to the green channel. So my output channel is green. I'm going to add e brighter green channel, even brighter. And what I'm looking for in this is I'm, I'm really looking to just brighten up these trees. So I'm going to really crank this up. I know it looks kind of ridiculously green here because we've really amped the green uh, channel up to 180. Let's do 180. And now here's the trick. When I subtract the blue channel from the green channel, I can make it go all the way down to minus 80 so that it adds up to 100. And when I do that, uh, it does not skew the white point. So you'll notice now that the, the cap, the white cap is not clipped. The colors are all off because I've just really cranked up the brightness in the green channel. So of course we have way too much green saturation. But I have brightened up the green channel without dramatically altering the luminosity in, in, in the other colors. So if we change this from normal to luminosity, um, I can see that I've really brightened up the grass and the trees. And I just want to brighten up the trees, right? I've darkened her, her, her blouse a little bit. So I'm going to invert this layer mask, Command or Control I. And this time I'm going to paint with white uh, over the trees to just kind of brighten. There's, uh, you know, green, dark green trees always photograph a little bit darker than perhaps we'd like. So I'm just going to kind of paint some highlights in there. And kind of one of the advantages of doing these moves using channel luminosity is that um, I don't have to worry about losing local contrast when I'm brightening something up. If I used a curve, it'd be hard to maintain uh, this feeling of texture and, and contrast in here uh, and get the same look in this, in this brightening effect. So now I've brightened those up to my satisfaction. Um, something that by subtracting the blue, I, I've also probably darkened the blue sky, yes. So I'm going to actually zoom in here a little bit because I don't want to brush over her um, her blouse, but I do want to brush over that sky and get that a little darker. And there's a little more contrast now between the sky and her hat. And I, you notice I don't have to worry about whether I brush over her hat or not. I'm just not, trying not to brush over her, her skin or the, the dress here. Um, so now I've, I've done two things. I've lightened the green foliage and darkened the sky with one uh, layer. Of, it's a channel mixer adjustment. Let's just, let's just get down to fit in the image. OK, so, so I've done that. But I, I, mean, I was kind of thinking that that extra green saturation looked good. So maybe we'll do another channel mixer. And we won't go quite so far. I'm just going to amp this up a little bit. You know, maybe we'll go to like 120. And again, subtracting the blue channel uh, to get that down to so that it adds up to 100. So we're minus, we add 120, and actually, let's nudge that back. So we add 120 and we subtract 20 and we end up with 100. And that is going to give us brighter and more colorful green. Um, I'm not totally happy that with the, the it's 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 kind of darkening the blue and so it's revealing a little more red in this blouse color so uh, that's the only thing I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to subtract it off of her face and her blouse so get a brush with black and uh, I'm just gonna subtract that or mask that off so that I don't skew the blue color to more purple than it should be. 
and I don't want to enhance too much green in the face, so I'm going to go ahead and mask that off. The beauty of this kind of stuff is that you don't have to really mask that precisely because we're really just masking color in or out of the image. Okay, so now let's sort of, uh, uh, let's toggle that on and off. As you can see, it's kind of brightened up the green, but also added a little more green saturation. So I have the grass and the trees look a little bit nicer. Uh, let's check how the original image looked. So it's pretty interesting how dramatically we've altered the, the tonal rendering of the image uh, using these channel blending operations. Um, one last thing I'd like to show you, uh, although it doesn't, it's not, ex doesn't exactly relate to the channel mixer. Uh, it's we're going to set a white point, a black point for this image, and it's something that I like to do, especially if I've done a lot of color editing. Uh, I just want my black point and my white point to be neutral and to hit the values that I need uh, for the image. So. We're going to first find the light point and the black point. So I'm going to use a channel mixer. And maybe we'll zoom in, zoom in just a little bit so that I can kind of move my, my... The thing of interest really is the subject, it's the woman. It's not so much the background. Um, <clears throat> but as I move, you know, this threshold adjustment, I put this on there, it turns the image into black and white. And as I move this slider around, I can change where that breakpoint between black and white is in the image. And I'm moving this to the left to find the thing that turns, the last thing to turn white is, it looks like this little dark little shadow down there. So I'm going to, I can zoom in just a little bit, and I'm going to place a color sampler. So I'm going to use the color sampler tool, and I've placed the color sampler right there in that deepest shadow. All right, so let's now let's now move the slider over to the right because I'm going to find the brightest thing, and the brightest thing uh, looks like a highlight right on that hat. So I'm going to zoom in here and we'll place a color sampler into that highlight. The other thing to notice is I, I wanna make sure that my sample size is big enough. Uh, for this image, I think 11 by 11 is good. Um, for lower res images, you might wanna use a five by five, but certainly not less than three by three. So I'm gonna leave it at 11 by 11 because I want an average of a bunch of pixels, not just one single pixel you know, if you've never changed this, you'll probably end up on point sample and you could be sampling a pixel of noise, right? So I want to get a good average uh, to get a, a, an appropriate number there. So now that I've found my black point and my white point, I can throw away this threshold adjustment. And sure enough, we've got a little highlight in the hat. Um, really, I've really zoomed in at 300% here. Um, so... Now, now we can kind of look at, let me just, uh, we look at the numbers and I can see that my highlight number there is 242, 244, 250. So really ideally I'd like that to, to be neutral um, and typically uh, to preserve a sense of texture um, in the white, I, I wouldn't want those values to, to go over 245, but, but there really isn't any texture here. Let me just zoom in again. It's it's pretty smooth. I, I've, I, you know, I might be able to get away with, with 250, but I don't want to go all the way to 255 because then we would lose completely any feeling of, of shape or uh, contrast uh, in this white object here. The, the cap. Um, the black is the black point. I'd like it to be neutral, uh, so I will work on neutralizing that. Um, and uh, let's now do that. So I'm gonna gonna get a curve up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make everything hit 250. Uh, so that means I'll go to the green channel. I select that endpoint on the curve. And then I'm going to nudge it 
to um, the left because I want this this uh, green channel value to go to 250 instead of 244. So I'm kind of nudging it to the left and watching these numbers go up and right at 250 I stop go to the red channel I'm going to do the same thing I got I'm just using the arrow keys on the keyboard to nudge it over that says 250 now um, since I'm here in the red channel let's work on the black point so I'm going to make my black point neutral by forcing everything to go to three um, so I'm in the red channel I go to the end point there and this time I'm going to nudge this uh, up because I need that value to go higher. Now I'm at three. I'm going to do the same thing with the green channel. Just air, use the arrow keys up to nudge it up. Now they're neutral. So um, 250, 250, 250. Uh, and my end point here is 333. If I was this is just destined for Instagram. It's only going to be viewed on the internet. Uh, I'm going to move that to zero, right? So I just, I, I grab that endpoint in the RGB composite curve, nudge it over until everything says zero, zero, zero. And now I've established my full uh, range from, from black to white in the image. It's subtle, but it, it's adding just a little bit of contrast and it's, it's kind of popping that highlight just a little bit. Now, if I was going to be printing this, uh, I know on my printer, um, if I use matte paper, I have to make this value go up to 15. And if I use glossy paper, I set it at 10. Um, the reason I do that is that that tone uh, on the glossy paper, every value lower than 10 will print the same shade of black. So if I leave it at zero, I'm losing 10, value, 10 values, 10 tones or range of tones for shadow detail in these dark areas. They'll just plug up and get even darker. So what I'm going to do is take that endpoint and nudge it up until I hit 10. Okay, and now I know I've got printable uh, shadow detail in the image. So there's a very subtle little thing. Uh, but it's the last thing I do uh, to kind of finalize an image, either for print or for online. So I hope you found that useful. Let's just go through the layer stack once again. I'll start at the bottom. Um, this is what it looked like originally. Uh, we use that red luminosity to brighten the skin. Uh, then we brightened the green using another channel a mixer blend here. And then we we added a little more green color saturation using another channel mixer blend. And finally, we had the white point and the black point in the curve. So let's uh, look at a review of what we learned. So to review, we saw how to use channel mixer with a red filter for uh, a black and white conversion and applied that adjustment layer in luminosity mode to lighten the skin tones. We saw how to amplify the green channel and subtract the blue channel in the channel mixer to lighten green colors without changing the white point when applied in luminosity mode. We used another channel mixer, green amplification, in normal mode for enhanced green color saturation. We used a temporary threshold adjustment layer to identify a white and black point in the image and set those points to final values using a curves adjustment. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Photoshop Rant. If you have any questions or you'd like to see more detail about any of the techniques I touched on in this project, please let me know in the comments. You can always find more detailed information on my website, and you might consider following me on YouTube and Twitter to find out about my various classes and workshops. Be sure and like the video and please subscribe to my YouTube channel on YouTube and ring the bell so that you don't miss any rants in the future. You might consider me, uh, you might consider following me on Instagram and I have two books in print available on Amazon and Kindle as well as paper versions. 
Mastering Exposure in the Zone System for Digital Photographers, and my bestseller, Skin, The Complete Guide to Digitally Lighting, Photographing, and Retouching Faces and Bodies. If you're looking for more in-depth Photoshop tutorials, I have a number of video courses available from my online school at veris.com. Look under the Education menu for Online Courses and pick from over 16 courses covering all aspects of post-production, workflow, retouching, and special effects, including my latest course on Black and White Mastery. Thank you for watching. Post your questions and suggestions for topics to explore under the video, and I'll see you in the next Photoshop rant.